Hey guys, back here at the shop. Uh, we're gonna be doing a video today on how to remove your left crankcase cover. Uh, and inside we will be replacing our roller weights, uh, driven face spring, contra spring, and our clutch bell housing. Um, so let's go over and take a peek at what we got going on for the parts that we're gonna be putting in. And as you can tell, I have them kind of laid out here. Um, so we're going to be installing the roller weights. And this is the Weiris Win roller weights, uh, they're 13 grams. Um, I'm hearing 15 grams is the kind of go-to on the Navi. Um, but I'm going to start with the 13 because that's what the kit came with. And with also the kit, I got the, uh, the spring, contra spring. Um, and I got to imagine I'm right-handed and I can pretty much almost push this all the way down uh, with my left arm. Um, so I gotta imagine this is gonna be a lot less resistance than the factory one. And then uh, we got the RDR clutch bell that we're gonna be installing as well. Um, but yeah, that should grab a little bit better. And then also uh, with these openings, I'm assuming it uh, is gonna make it a little bit uh, easier to cool. Um, there's still a little bit of weight to it. It's not aluminum, so. Um, yeah, and then we got some tools for the job. Um, you got your clutch compressor and then your uh, spanner wrench. So, but uh, we got a special guest today. I'd like to introduce Handsome Samson. How you doing, Samson? Can you say hi to everyone? Yep, look at those eyes. <laughs> but anyway, we'll uh, we'll get going on the bike install here. So let's uh, let's go over to the bike. So what you're gonna to need to take off the left crankcase cover is an eight mil and also a Phillips. Um, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to start to remove is um, your lower brake cable, um, your holder, your clamp. And so we're gonna go ahead and just remove the bottom one. And you can see the kind of the clamp itself comes off. And by doing this, you're gonna be able to access the two other bolts that are behind this plate. So we'll go ahead and remove all those since we're down here. Um, after removing that one smaller eight mil bolt, there are going to be eight other ones that you are gonna to have to remove to get the left crankcase cover off. And you can see that just kind of drops down a little bit. You want to come up to the front here, or the back of the bike anyway, and get the last bolt that's on here. And just be mindful there is a spacer. And with that being done, you can kind of just drop it out of the way. Don't need to pull on it too much, but I'll go ahead and just continue moving the rest of the bolts. And some of these are different sizes, so make sure when you take them out, you just line them up or however you want to organize them so you remember which one goes where. Depending on the projects that I do, um, I use cardboard and I kind of make a diagram of the case or whatever I'm taking apart, just so I remember a lot of the projects that I do, they end up sitting a lot longer than uh, 
an Abbey project. So I end up making, like I said, I take a piece of cardboard, make a diagram of the bolts that I did take out. And uh, just so I have better reference, you know, cause sometimes things take a little bit longer um, to get projects done. And by the time you come back to them, they are uh, kind of half forgot where the heck stuff went. So um, it's a good idea just to somehow document the bolts that come out. Cause like I said, these are all not the same size. Um, they're pretty close, but for this job, we're not going to do that because we're going to be putting it right back together. Um, but over here, you have a Phillips, and that's connected to your uh, your air duct. And actually, the air duct itself is um, aligned, or not aligned, but is the frame. So there is air coming in from somewhere in the frame because this metal piece that's behind this plastic is connected to the frame where this rubber duct is actually connected to so um, but it's on there a little a little better so we're going to take just a little bit more off of it try to get that clamp off a little bit more you don't have to take the clamp all the way off just enough to do something with it and there we go Peel it back, try not to tear it or anything like that. It's pretty uh, thick. I kind of imagine you wouldn't tear it, but and then you can see how easy this is coming off. Oh, so we got a little dowel in there, and simple as that, guys. So go ahead and set that aside. Now that we have our left crankcase cover off, you're going to want to grab a 22 millimeter socket and a breaker bar. Um, this part of the dismantle does call for a special tool. It's a, um, a clutch center holder and all it is is a pliers and at the ends of the pliers they have, it aligns with the teeth so you can hold on to it. I unfortunately don't have that so I'm going to use a breaker bar and a glove to hold on to it. Um, if you can't get it, by all means, go ahead and use an impact. I don't necessarily like using impacts just for the fact that there's a lot of torque to them. Um, but there are times that I do have to use it just for the fact that you don't have a special tool for it. And, you know, so, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to loosen this up. And I'm just gonna hang on to the uh, driven face here. Try to bust it loose. See if I can get a better handle on here. Oh God, I definitely got some force on there. All right. So I'll go ahead and move your pulley nut. There's gonna be a washer. And there's also the uh, ratchet starter as well. And the ratchet starter goes to your kick starter. There's little splines that kick out that grab this. You can see inside there's little teeth grabbing onto your shaft. That just spins, uh, spins the old motor there. So I'm going to put that stuff back. And remember how it goes off is the same way it's going to go back on. Um, but we'll go ahead and grab our fin, driven face fin. We'll go ahead and grab our drive face here. Like I said, we're just gonna put this all back together here. Go ahead and pull your belt off. A little boss right here. Just pull this all together. Um, just kind of put your hand, your couple fingers back there because it will separate and your rollers will fall out. But this is your boss. Take that out and then on the back side here. There's your roller weights. Just gonna go ahead and put this back together because we're gonna be moving the clutch or removing the clutch as well to get to the uh, contra spring. 
To remove your clutch and your bell housing, you are going to have to remove the outer nut. Uh, and with doing so, you are going to need a 19 millimeter socket in your breaker bar. And this also calls for a special tool. Um, it's your spanner wrench, also known as a universal holder. Um, at the end here, it has some pins. And those are going to line up to the clutch itself inside the bell housing. And there's little holes that line up. And you just hold it in there like so. And you take your breaker bar here. Go ahead and loosen it and should be able to just take it right off. like so. So now that we have our pulley and our clutch out, we're going to want to use a compression tool. Uh, it's a clutch compressor and this is kind of vital to this. It uh, makes the job a little bit more safer. Um, there are people that use C-clamps, vice grips, whatever they want to use to tighten this down. Um, I'm not going to do that um, just for the fact that, you know, there is a lot of tension in here, but um, to use this tool, um, it's pretty easy. You just stick your clutch bottom side down, pull you up, slides right in, as you can see. And just want to tighten it just enough. You don't want to over tighten it because it's just there to hold. Just give it a couple little, little snugs. It's a 27 on there uh, for the top nut up here for the compression tool. And then you're going to want to get to your uh, pulley nut. We're going to take this off, and this is a 39 millimeter socket you want to use to get this off. And this thing is on there pretty good. So just get a good, good tight. grip on it and oh right is on there pretty good so now that we have that off we're gonna go ahead and put it back up and we're gonna slowly bring this out and that's gonna allow that spring to compress from the pulley in your clutch. Like I said, doing this job, this tool makes it a lot easier and a lot safer, a lot quicker. you take your spring seat out oh this thing's actually pretty short 
compared to the Weirus win. So you push it down to my left and <laughs> actually not too bad. So we gotta get this collar off. The spring seat. We'll go ahead and add the new one. back in. It definitely has some tension on this one. Holy moly. I actually thought the uh, factory one would have Little bit more, but this one is a Got her in. Take your 27. And you just start compressing it. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to be doing that with C clamps. This uh, definitely made it a lot easier. In the bottom down there, it has to line up just right. We'll go ahead and start tightening. Keep going until it stops. We'll go ahead and put your clutch pulley nut back on and this has to get uh, I think it's 40 foot pounds of pressure. Or, uh, 40 foot pounds so I'll get my torque wrench here Remember the this is a 39 for socket.
we got our contra spring installed in our clutch pulley system, uh, we're gonna go ahead and just reinstall everything the same way we took it off, just in reverse. Um, so we'll go ahead and add the pulley and clutch to the shaft, and then we'll put the belt around the pulley and just slide it around, make sure it's tight so you don't jam it into the housing. And make sure it seats well between the splines and moves freely. Um, next, you're going to want to uh, add your clutch bell. And the comparison to the two from factory to aftermarket, uh, the aftermarket one is a little bit lighter. Um, factory one is, is heavier, and you can tell that. You know, the breathing holes are a little bit smaller, so significantly enough, it's probably going to cool down a little bit quicker as well, and a little bit of weight reduction is always good. And go ahead, just put that on. You can go ahead and put your washer and your outer nut back on. I'm going to use a spanner tool to hold it. And don't forget the 19 millimeter to put this back on and the outer nut needs to be 36 foot pounds torque. Next, we're gonna install our aftermarket roller weights. And with doing that, you're gonna to want to grab your variator and you're gonna to to move your ramp plate uh, with doing that, there are plastic pieces, they're slide pieces, you don't want to lose these, uh, they could fall off, so just be mindful. Um, so just go ahead and dump out your 17 gram uh, OEM roller weights and we'll add our 13 gram Weiris Win roller weights. Um, I was kind of thinking I should probably get a new variator and maybe you guys can help me out with picking what variator to get because I'd don't really know what to get for it. Um, so you guys can help me out, point me in the right direction for a new variator. Um, we'll go ahead and put your ramp back on. Like you said, make sure you got your black pieces in there. And one thing you don't wanna forget either is your boss either. So when you put that in, it just goes and stops it's not going to go anywhere so uh, make sure you're holding it because you will push it out so make sure you have a couple fingers behind the ramp itself and just pull back your belt a little bit oh see had a little roller weight fall out a little bit like i said just make sure that's tight because with what just happened, you could have that uh, not be a good thing if you're not paying attention. Go ahead and push that back. Make sure that boss seat's all the way in. Move it a little bit. And go ahead and slide your belt back over. Make sure it goes over, over the boss. All right. Next, you're gonna grab your driven face and your driven face fin. And you're gonna to wanna to put that over the shaft and make sure it seats on the splines so it doesn't go anywhere. Next, you're gonna wanna grab your ratchet starter, your washer, and your nut. Go ahead and make sure that ratchet starter goes all the way in and doesn't move. You don't want that spinning because that uh, is with your kickstart, and if that just spins, it's you're not going to kick anything. It's just going to just going to spin. But either way, I mean, it's going to once you tighten this, it's going to grab on. Um, but you just want to make sure that you're not crushing it. Just take your time and do the job once, and not break anything. 
Oh, we got that on there. I like that your pulley nut hand tight. You're gonna go ahead and grab your torque wrench and a 22 millimeter socket. And you're gonna to wanna to torque this to 69 foot pounds. So now that you have everything torqued down, um, just kind of go over everything, make sure everything's good, nothing's in the way. Uh, make sure your, your starter pin is okay. It's not falling out or anything like that. Um, we're gonna go ahead and actually start it to make sure everything is going to move smoothly before we put the left crankcase cover on. Um, so we'll give her a start here. Key on. Let's go ahead and install the left crankcase cover. So when you put your left crankcase cover back on, you are supposed to put liquid gasket in certain spots of the crankcase cover itself. Um, you kind of see that there's some gray here, a little bit of gray there, um, also up here and a little spot up here. Uh, it's mainly up on top of the crankcase cover. Uh, it's just little dabs here and there. So when you're putting it back on, make sure you put some of that back on. Um, so we'll go ahead and just install this the same way that we took it off. Um, there are dowel pins on the left over here and then also on the top right of the bell house. Uh, there's just two of them. It should line up pretty nice by having those dowels in there. them in. Now when you're putting these in, you kind of want to go a crisscross pattern. I'm going to start with this back one here. It has a little bit of a gap, so I just kind of want to see if it sets in a little bit. All right. Okay. Well, go ahead and put the rest of your bolts in. Just get them finger tight for now and go over and we'll tighten them back up. So you guys kind of get the gist of what I'm doing here. Um, all these bolts are going to be 13 foot pounds of torque. Um, and there's that's pretty much it to it. Uh, you just tighten up your bolts. 13 foot pounds of torque, like I said. And don't forget to Put your air, air duct back on.
And once you get your eight bolts on, like I said, it's 13 foot pounds of torque. Um, you just gotta tighten those up a little bit. And then your final process that you have to do is make sure you put your little 10 mil bolt back in. There it is. I'll obviously button these up, but to shorten the video a little bit, I'm going to sign off and I hope you guys enjoy the video and we'll see you for the next one. Um, I hopefully will get tires. Um, I had a set of tires. I, they did not work for what I wanted to do. So now I'm actually waiting for the tires that I kind of wanted. Inventory is really low. So the tires that I did order, um, they're supposed to be shipped out hopefully Monday and I will be doing the next video hopefully on uh, tires. Uh, other than that, I have some electrical stuff to do um, for the motor anyways, nothing internal, but I do have a hyper valve to put on. That's pretty easy. Um, that was suggested to do um, with the roller weights and the, uh, the spring. Um, so I might do a short video of that. But yeah, it's uh, kind of waiting for these tires. So hopefully we'll be able to get that done. Um, but thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.